Okay, good morning, everyone. Teresa, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Merry Christmas still. Merry Christmas. As long as it's still 2020, it's still Merry Christmas. Hope you had a good Christmas day. I know it's been raining a lot. We had power outage, like whole, like five hours yesterday in Manoa. Yeah. Power outage here at this church too for a couple of hours, but like, actually in my house, it was like the light came out in the early in the morning while we were still sleeping. So our main Moksanim, his, his sermon that he was preparing, he couldn't retrieve it. And I think he just couldn't finish the sermon. So he said he was repeating the sermon that he did a long time ago. <laughs> So he got to sleep a little extra though because it was already something he's done before. But anyway, interesting um, couple of days because of the rain. Um, so today we're going to talk about a special gift. And I know some of you got gifts, some of you didn't. That's okay because it's supposed to be Jesus' birthday, right? So we should have given gift to Jesus. So. We can talk about what kind of gift we can give to Jesus after today's uh, message. Okay, but let's do what's next, and that is praying, right? Let's pray. Dear okay, Jesus, we thank you for the greatest gift on earth, which is uh, Jesus Christ, your son, who came to save us um, from our horrible, horrible, um, what was to be a horrible, horrible ending in our lives but you made it very special so that we can have amazing, amazing life that is to come. We thank you, Lord. Uh, help us to give our whole selves to you today. Help us to worship you and sing to you and listen, Lord, um, uh, in expectancy and in hope of uh, getting closer to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Okay. Okay, this is a song, which is the message today, okay? Okay, let's try to sing along if you already know it, your parents all know it.
know this one. The world is searching. What's that look?
you guys go up to sixth grade, right? After you finish fifth grade, raise your hand if you're fifth graders. One, two, three, four, five, five, right? So when you go up to fifth grade, you're not going to be with me anymore. You're going to have Pastor Daniel right there in the back. And one of the things Pastor Daniel wants want to do with our kids, our youth group, is to train you to speak to people, like to share about what God has done in, in your lives. It could be two minutes, three minutes. It's called the testimony of what you're doing, of, you know, how you learn more about God and what God did in your life. So um, next time, I don't know. I'm so excited to see who's going to speak, you know, to talk, talk to you guys. And that's part of the reason I ask you to also collect offering and pray. Ian did a good job praying today about the offering. So this is how we follow God. We, we want to be a witness, right? So one thing is that you can get up in front of people and share, share what, what Jesus said. So that's all part of training. Okay, that's good. Um, I had a question for you guys. Um, well, Matthew chapter two is what we're going to be learning about. So if you need help, raise your hand. But look, look at Matthew chapter two and you put your finger or, or pick your hand on it so that when I talk about it, you guys will be ready to find it. So those of you at home, take out your Bibles. Matthew chapter 2, we're going to continue on with the birth of Jesus Christ and what happened afterwards, okay? All right, so Matthew, as you know, is the first book of the New Testament, right? The Bible is broken into Old Testament and New Testament. So Old Testament is all from the beginning of creation. God created the world, right? And it ends right before Jesus is born, right before John the Baptist is born, right? And from the time John the Baptist and Jesus is born and all the way until forever, right? Uh, what's going to happen at the end times? It's called the New Testament. So we are living in Old Testament or New Testament right now? Are we living in Old Testament or New Testament? The New Testament, okay? Because the last book of the Bible, Revelations, tells us what's going to happen at the end. Okay, so that hasn't even finished yet, right? So, yep, so... Let me ask you a question. Of all the gifts you've ever received in your life, lives, uh, what was the most special gift that you received? Can you think of a time where you just did that? Such a, it was such an important or memorable gift that you'll never forget. Yeah, yeah. Can you speak loud? Oh, yeah. You got your dog during COVID, right? Before COVID? Okay, before. So Ian is saying that he got a dog that he really, really wanted. And that was the most special gift. Well, that's right, because your dog is living and he's with you, sharing with you. Anyone else? Special gift or present you ever received in your whole life that you'll never forget. Anybody? You have one? Fire Ryan Foy. Fire Ryan Foy. So, fight. 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 Sorry, I, I'm all these things, I don't know what they are. Sorry. He's like, Tony, you're too old to understand. Um, how about a gift that you ever gave that was a special gift to anybody? Did you ever give a gift to somebody that was like so special to that person? Anybody? Did you, did you ever give a special gift? Anybody at home? Did you ever give a special gift to somebody, a person? Yeah. Chloe. Can, can you repeat that? Said being there for somebody when they really need it. They were going through a hard time. Oh, so you gave somebody, somebody something that they were going through a hard time? Oh, what was it? Moral support. Oh, moral support. You gave somebody was having a real hard time and she gave them a moral support, comforting them, encouraging them, and that person will never have to do it. That's really a good gift. So what did she give? She gave her time, she gave her energy, right? She gave her heart, right? That that's a special gift. But you guys, you're forgetting you really did give something really, really, really special to somebody. Don't you know? Yourselves, guys, when you were born, you guys were the most wonderful, precious gifts 
to your parents, to your grandparents, to your siblings, you were the gift, right? So if somebody says to you, where's my gift? You go, I'm your gift, right? You can say that. Okay, besides that, besides you being yourself being a gift to your parents and loved ones, I can remember, I was thinking, what did I receive when I was your age? I was like, I'll never forget. Okay, so when I was your age, right, I think I was around eight years old. I was living in Korea. That was long, long, long time ago. Long, long, long time ago in Korea, we were pretty poor. We weren't starving or homeless or anything like that, but we had like, all the, most of the time kimchi and rice. That was our banchan and a little bit of hong banchan, like beans and stuff. Some on special days, maybe we had some eggs and stuff, or gym. So that was our like standard, right? Um, my mom was a good cook, so she made us a lot of puchinge, you know, the flour cake, you know, pancakes and stuff. But um, I never really got to eat a lot of like a lot of fruits or fruits or candies or chips and things like that, right? Baked like bakery stuff. But and then my dad went to America when I was when I was starting elementary school. So I think he left when I was about seven years old. So I did not live with my, my dad for like four years until he took us all to America. But he, he came to visit us once, but I remember like seeing other children with their daddies and even though my dad wasn't dead, but I felt like he was dead because I didn't see him for so long. Of course I got to buy letters. And, but anyway, well, it was around Christmas time and my sister, who was older than me, she came home with a big bag. And of course, I said, what is that? And she goes, look, and she dumped it out and there were a lot of cookies and chips and things that I saw at the store, but I never got to eat. You know yokang? Do you know yokang? The like, like red bean jelly kind of candy and other stuff. And like cookies, like something that I only saw in commercials, but she like dumped it out and I was like, what is the way to get this? So my sister told me that when she was coming home, somebody got out of the taxi and and said, "Do you live here?" And she said yes. And she gave her she gave her the whole bag of good goodies and said, "Here, you take it." And then he got on the cab and went back home. She goes, "I don't know who it is." And we were all trying to figure out who that was. But anyway, I can never forget that because it's that dream come true. I got to eat all these good things, share it with my family. Uh, I called my sister in the morning. I said, do you remember? My sister's like 60 years old now. Do you remember the time when he was standing outside the litter and somebody came taxi and do you remember? She, she doesn't remember. But I said, I remember. And, and I'm thinking now, the only, only explanation is maybe my dad's friend wanted to give us something because he felt sorry for us because my uh, dad wasn't at home. But anyway, when I was your age, that, like, that's like the amazing gift that I ever received. It was something I didn't really need, but it was really, really good to have, right? When we were lonely and all that. So I feel really thankful whoever that man was. And I hope now I could do something like that to somebody who doesn't, who don't have things, right? For you guys, candies and chips is like, you don't need it. Chocolates, you already have too much, right? But I bet you some in other parts of the country, um, kids like that, it, it's going to be something amazing they'll never ever forget. Uh, they'll come to church even for one piece of candy and chewing gum. And that's what when we gave um, Christmas uh, shoebox, oh my goodness, those kids who receive your gifts that you gave, they will never forget it in their whole lives because that's like the only time they ever ever receive such big gifts. So. You already did it too. You did give a special gift to somebody. You were the special gift and you already gave some, if you did give Christmas box, shoe box. Today is what about a, a special gift that God gave us. What is the special gift that, amazing gift that God gave us? Jesus, right? That's the ultimate gift, right? Because without Jesus, we have no future. We die, that's it, and, and, and worse. Right? But because Jesus came, God sent Jesus, his son, we have hope. Even when we die, we're not afraid of death. Because after death, we have a new life with Jesus in heaven, right? And not only did Jesus just die for you, what else happened? Jesus, did Jesus say that like on the cross for your sins? No. What happened? He lived again, right? After three days, he lived again, which proved that he really is the son of God. 
And it was also proof that you can live again, too. That even though you die, you can live again and have a new body in heaven. So that's what Christmas is about. And today we're going to talk about other gifts. So, so when Jesus was born, uh, tell me, who can tell me what, what is the name of the town that Jesus was born? Yeah, who can? Yeah. Bethlehem, right in Judah, right here. Bethlehem, and this is a land of, you know how many tribes were there? Twelve tribes of Israel, right? So Bethlehem is the tribe of Judah, remember? And Jesus is the tribe of Judah, right? Because Mary and Joseph are from that tribe. Uh, this is, remember, where was Joseph and Mary living? Nazareth. When they married? Nazareth. Nazareth. And they had to travel all this far past Jerusalem and Bethlehem. That's where they had the baby, right? The baby's born. Yeah, interesting thing. And we can turn it all. Oh, okay, we can wait a little. Maybe you can focus on me because the light doesn't show me that way. So interesting is like after they had the baby, what do you think they did? They registered their name, they had the baby, what would they do next? Go back. Go back, right? You would think that they would go back, but they didn't go back. They stayed in Bethlehem area. They said they rented a house and they were living there. And we are thinking maybe they lived around two years raising the baby, right? And, but something strange happened. You know, at that time, ever since Jesus was born in the sky towards the east side, this way, right? There was a big, yeah, this side, west, west. Oh, so, sorry, west side, west side. There was this, there was an amazing star, right? It was, it's, it's something that's like, ever, no one has ever seen. It's a huge, amazing star that just kind of stayed there, stayed, there for a long time and people were at all of it you don't remember you saw an amazing planet right was it planet two planets together yeah uh, that happened and they said it happened in 800 years or something like that but anyway this star was so humongous remember that song we just sang and you saw the star right anyway that's the star was hanging up there right on the west side and people were trying to figure out what is that but nobody of course you can't figure it out and that, you know, like at that time it was hard to figure out, but then there were some wise men living on the east side, near Babylonia, here we go, who is that? Okay, yeah, around this side, east side, that's, that's Egypt side, this side, Babylonia and Persia, there were some wise men, they were like intellectuals, they were also magic magicians, they did magic, they they could read uh, they could tell dreams they had some special i wouldn't say they're holy people right but in their own country they were holy people but not in our standard right but anyway they they read a lot they studied a lot they used to see the stars and the, how the stars are aligned and they would be able to figure out what's happening maybe they could tell weather i don't know but anyway these men they were looking at the star and they just they said wow that, you know, that's been there for like two years. We have to figure out. And then they were looking at, you know, that direction. What country is there in that direction? They said, well, yeah, Israel. Nation of Israel, of course, they're not, they're occupied by the Romans now, but you know, that's where the people live. And they said, well, let's look at their holy book. And they must have studied the holy book of the Israelites, which is like Bible, right? They looked through Old Testament, read scrolls, and maybe they researched, and they found out that Hey, that star means something great. And a, 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 a king is born for the Jews. And that star is just amazing. It must be like a very, very special king, right? So they, they knew about the God of Israelites, I guess, and what the God of Israelites did to the people. You know how God rescued people from Egypt and all that, how they conquered Canaan and you know, gave them lands and divided into tribes and all that. They probably knew all that and they said, you know what, we need to go there. We need to find out where the special, the next king, the real king of Israel, uh, you know, is born. And so they settled up their camels, a um, lot of things that they need for the journey. Because you know what, from where they were, to all the way, uh, to where, the, where Bethlehem was, it's about, they say, about 800 miles. 
And they say if they took a donkey and went walk, right? They're thinking about if they walk like 20 miles in a day, they would get there in about 40 days. So imagine they, they have to take people, the guards with them. They, will, they probably were very, very rich people. All the things that they need for journey, food and change of clothes and everything they needed. And they started, well, the picture should have been this way, right? So they started their journey toward Israel, looking for whether, the, hoping the star will guide them to that direction. And they did. They went and went, walk, 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 or got on the camel. And then the, finally, where would they go though? Okay, that's the right direction, but where would they go to look for the special Christ, the Savior, the King? Where would they go? How would they know where to find the baby? Where would you go? Yeah? Would you go to the capital maybe? Where are the kings living in? Yeah, Jerusalem, right? They would go to the palace. So they went around there in Jerusalem. They were like asking around, where is this Christ, the king of the Jews? Is there a baby born? And then they were asking. And then that news got into the ear of king. The king of Israel at that time is King Herod. Yeah, he's actually not the real king of Israel, but the Roman em emperor gave, picked this guy to, and his family to be the king at that time. Uh, he had some kind of royal heritage, but anyway, he's like, his servants came and said, well, these magi came from the east, they're like really smart guys, and they're saying, by the look of the star, that somebody, a Christ is born, and they're asking to see the baby. And they said, what? Do you have any babies that's born from your concubines or whatever? Right, your queens? And they said, no, I don't have any babies. And then he got really, really yeah. mad and furious and Jealous. Thank you very much. And he felt very threatened. He said, what is this? And then he called. Who would you call to find out? But those magi, they're, they're smart guys, but they're not from our country. And so they go, he goes, call the scribes. The scribes are the people that you can trust who know the Bible, right? Call the scribe. Call the chief priest. Find out. And then they called him and said, okay, come on. Does the, does the Old Testament Right, um, Bible, a scroll, talk about the Christ being born. And of course, because in Old Testament, you know the Old Testament of the Bible? I, I looked it up yesterday. This much is the Old Testament, do you know that? It's filled with prophecies of Jesus Christ who's going to be born. About more than 42, about 45 prophecies. It talks about who this they say that he's the son of son of Judah or son of uh, son of David. They say that he's going to be killed. He's going to be saving the world. It talks about everything. And so they said, "Oh, okay. Let's look at the scroll." They look and they go, "Here it is. It's written in Micah five two. That's still Old Testament. It tells you where this baby is going to be born." And so they looked at Micah 5. Everybody look for Micah 5 too. Micah is the end of the Old Testament, a page, one page before end of the Old Testament, right before Matthew. Right before Matthew. Everybody look. Right before Matthew is Malachi, right? So go before Malachi. And Zechariah, go before Zechariah, and you will meet Micah. Zephaniah. Okay, hold on. Oh, right here. What page is that? Somebody tell me where Micah is. Am I wrong? Okay, Micah is before. So 1,000, about 1,116. Okay, chapter Micah is towards the end of the, not right before, sorry. Micah chapter 5, verse 2. Okay, you got it? Okay. Let's read it together. Okay, look, this book uh, is 1117, Micah chapter 5, 2. Okay, that's where the scribes were looking at. Okay, let's read together. Ready, go. The Lord says, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, 
you might not be an important town in the nation of Judah, but out of you will come for me a ruler over Israel. His family line goes back to the early years of your nation. So it talks about where? Where is this baby going to be born? Jerusalem. In Bethlehem, right? It says Bethlehem, even though you're only a small tribe within, a tro tro within Judah, right? Small in the clan of, you know, small clan in the tribe of Judah, out of you will come a king, like the savior, right? So then they said, yeah, in Bethlehem. So guess what he does? He goes, I'm gonna find that, I'm gonna find that baby. Because he's not my kid, and he's not gonna be the king, because I am the king. <laughs> I am the king, right? So he calls the Magi, and the wise man says, oh, welcome to my palace, and he goes, I understand that you're looking for the Christ, the king of the Jews, welcome, and he goes, and they go, do you know where the baby is? And he goes, yes, we know that he's from, yes, he's born in Bethlehem. I want you to go and look for this baby, this precious baby, diligently look for this baby. And when you find the baby, please tell me so I can also go and worship the baby. Do you think they should come back and tell him? No. no. I will tell him. Yeah, you would tell him. So he goes, they, the Magi's went, and they actually, the amazing thing is if you read the Bible, guys, it tells you that the star rose, and it was leading them. It's in the Bible. Go back to Matthew chapter 2. Go back to Matthew chapter 2, yeah? It says the star was leading them just to the, that direction in Bethlehem. And it, the, the star kind of stuck right at the house of where the Jesus is. It was like shining right at the house. It's amazing. That's why it's not an ordinary star. Ordinary stars can't do that, right? So the Bible says that when they saw when they went into the house and saw the baby, they were exceedingly happy. They were so happy and so surprised and so amazed that whatever they saw was right, right? And guess what they did? Everybody look for that part. What did they do when they saw the baby? Okay, before that, can you read it? What did they do? As soon as they went into the house and saw the baby, still in chapter five, what does it say? Okay. They fell and worshipped him. Very good. They like they went. Ah! They fell down and worshipped. You know why they fell down? Because when you see the king passing, when the king is there, you're not supposed to look at the king in the face because he's so old. You're supposed to bow down. You have to close your eyes and you have to not look at the face because he's so awesome, right? They fell down. They worshipped the baby. They knew the baby is going to be somebody very, very special. They worshipped him and they gave him what? Yeah, they gave him gifts, presents. When you go to see somebody very important, you don't go empty-handed. You always have to give them a gift. And it, it can't be a hand sanitizer or toilet paper or tissue or anything like that. It has to be something very, very special. Like gold and sapphires and diamonds and gold. Something very special. Well, these these magi, the wise men, how many were there? Three. We think there are three, but it's wrong. We don't know there are three. The Bible never says three. But we know that they gave three gifts, right? What are the three gifts? They gold. gave Jesus gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And gold, you know gold, right? This is not 100% gold, but gold is always good and expensive. Because gold is money, right? Uh, frankincense is uh, incense. Uh, like a, re a tree resin, it's from a very expensive. You can only use it. You can. It's so precious that you can use it to worship God in the altar, right? You can take it and you, you light it up and all that. You use it because it has gives off good smell. Also, myrrh or spice you can use that. And myrrh is also something like that, very sweet aroma, like a perfume. But they're very very expensive, so they give it to Jesus, the baby. And then they say goodbye, Mary says thank you, bye, and they go, they sleep outside. I mean, I don't know where the Magi slept that night, 
They said, tomorrow morning, as soon as the sun comes up, we're going to go to the king and we're going to tell the king where the baby is so that they can, he, the king can also, also go worship. And in their dream, God says, angel of God says, don't go there. Don't go to the king. This king's going to kill the baby. So they got up and they ran, probably ran away, took the other route all the way back to Persia or Babylonia where they're from, right? And guess what? The same night, same night when Joseph was sleeping. Oh, sorry, I forgot to show you this picture. Okay, this is them giving gifts. Same night, as Joseph was sleeping, an angel appeared to Joseph in the dream and said, Get up, Joseph. Take your wife, take the child, and run away. Go to Egypt, and don't come back to Israel until I tell you to come back. It's not safe. Your baby's in danger. So he takes everything and he just runs. They run away all the way down to Egypt. Rather than they've ever traveled so far, right? Yeah. Rather than they ever traveled so far. Egypt, down there. Okay. Yeah, more like down here, right? Anyway, um, so they did that. Because God had to protect the baby, right? Who do you think was trying to kill the baby? The king was, but whose work is the king trying to do? Satan's devil's work. Because whenever you want to do something what God wants, the devil is always there to stop you. Right? Well, the king found out that the magi, the wise guys, wise men, that they didn't listen to him, that they ran off. Without telling him, he felt really, really cheated and dis disrespected and humiliated and so angry. Guess what he did? I gotta find that kid. Who is that kid? He can't be the king. Uh, so he goes, we gotta kill him. So he he calls all these soldiers and tells them all to go where? Bethlehem. To Bethlehem and areas around Bethlehem just to cover all the spaces, right? And says, kill every boy who, who are less than two and below. Any baby, infant, or up to two years old, right? Prince of, I'm um, not Sorry. So anyway, that night, a lot of babies got killed in that area, and it's in the Bible. And it was in the even in prophesies and Bethlehem. There'll be a lot of crying. You can hear a lot of wailing and crying of moms who lost their babies. Um, but Jesus was saved. You know, God protected him. So, you know, let's go back to the gifts. Those expensive three gifts, why do you think the wise, the wise men gave it to them? Why? Why? Did you know Mary and Joseph, they were rich people? What do you think they did with the gift? You already know, so I'm not going to call them. What do you think they did with the gift? Did they need gold, frankincense, and myrrh? You think they did? Yeah. Well, they did need it. Because you know what? They had to they had to run away to Egypt. And you have to run away to a foreign land. What do you need? You need money. You need to find a house and you need to keep yourself low profile. You can't, you know, nobody can find you, right? They needed to hide. So we're thinking that all that stuff was really needed uh, for Jesus to and his parents to live at that time. Okay. So you know, precious gift was given. To this Jesus, because they kind of knew who this Jesus is. Do we know who Jesus is, guys? No. Do we know who Jesus is? Now we know, right? Because now it's not just the Old Testament. We have the New Testament talks about how Jesus lived and died and he resurrected and, and the apostles and all that, right? Right? Now we know everything. It's not a secret anymore. All we need to do is not figure out anymore because we already know Jesus, the King of Kings, is our Savior, right? Now, our turn to give him gifts, right? What kind of gifts, knowing who Jesus is now, right? What kind of gifts can you give to Jesus? Okay, Christmas, we think, oh, we have to give each other gifts and game, games and stuff. But actually, it's Jesus' birthday. But that tradition, I think, came out because of that, right? The tradition started because um, the, 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 the wise men gave gifts. 
And so we have to think, what kind of gift do you think you can give to Jesus? Yeah. Huh? Love, that's right. That's the most precious. And where is the love coming from? Our hearts. That's the, we have to give him most expensive, no most precious, and that's it, our love. No? If you give one million dollars to somebody and say, I hate you, is that a good gift? You can take the million. No. And say, forget it, I don't want your money, right? I want your heart, right? So God wants our heart. And God, is, God wants our love. God wants our money too, guys, because with money we can help other people, right? Right? What else can we give? We can give our valuable things. But you know that when you give good things to poor people, people who don't have, it's like same as giving to Jesus. Did you know that? Yeah? So I want you to remember that. Oh, well, God doesn't need my one million dollars. He does, actually. He needs your money to help poor people because serving them is like serving Jesus, okay? What else can you give? Your life, your, your love, your money, what else? Respect. Thank you very much. Yeah, you respect him, right? Jesus, forgive my sin. I know you know thanks. And you don't, you don't keep on sinning, right? You respect him, right? Because of what he did. What else? You can give him your time. You can pray. Use that time to pray. Read your Bible, read your Bible so get to know God more. Give time to other people. There are so many things. So today I want you to think about it. Let's close our eyes. So guys, let's think about what I can give. God, this special time, I want to give you this. And I want you to just say that to Jesus. What can I get? Helping other people is also helping God, too. So I want you to remember that. Dear Jesus, if at this time, we were just concerned about what kind of gifts we're going to receive from our parents, our friends, or our relatives. Lord, forgive us. Help us to refocus, redirect uh, to the truth, which is really focusing on what I can do for Jesus, what I can do for the people that Jesus loves. Uh, who needs my help? Who needs my time? Who needs my money? Lord, think about those things and help us to give you something so precious. But more than anything, Lord, help us to, we give you our hearts, our love, Lord, and our devotion and respect to you. Lord, help us to carry it out, not just think about it and say it, but help us to actually do it in action throughout this week. And help us, Lord, to do that. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Okay, we don't have too much time, so we're going to end.